Hey guys, Shanti Phil to the brand new DVD Blu-ray Tuesday shop mirror today. Take a guatay see things came out, see things are on sale today. Today though, the big releases that come out, there's not a ton of new things that are being stores, there's a handful. Uh, but one of the big things that comes out is the Impractical Jokers um, movie. Uh, that releases today, as well as uh, for the first time ever on Blu-ray, uh, Pretty in Pink. That one is coming out today as well. Also though, at the end of this video, is going to be a whole bunch of brand new DVD, Blu-ray, and 4K reviews for some things I received to review and talk about for you guys. So definitely stay tuned for those at the end of this video. Also as well too, let me know what you guys thought of the DVDs, Blu-rays, and 4Ks that I you know talked about and reviewed, if you guys have seen them, what you guys thought of them, also if you guys plan on picking any of them up. Now here though I wanted to talk about something about, you know, with my dog uh, Lulu. Now I just want to say though, if you guys don't want to hear anything sad, uh, skip this part and just skip to when I end up, you know, doing the into Walmart we go part. So just skip to that if you guys don't want to hear, you know, the sad news about Lulu, my dog Lulu. Some people have already heard it as well. Uh, I basically wanted just to let, let you guys know a little bit about that in this video because I know that most people see this video, you know, the Tuesday video, so I wanted to make sure to talk about it a little bit for those if you're wondering why you don't see her anymore and, you know, future videos and things like that. But basically what happened is uh, last Wednesday, Lulu passed away and, um, but basically I wanted to just kind of talk a little bit about it. Uh, you know, she was a little, I think she was 11 and a half years old. And, um, you know, she was a Cavalier King Charles Spaniel. And, you know, um, basically what happened was probably about maybe three and a half years ago or so, she ended up going into the doctors, you know, you know, for the doctor appointment. They, you know, they did the thing where they did check, you know, her heart and all that kind of stuff. And they found that at that point she was stage three heart failure. And that's the one thing with Cavalier King Charles, within that breed, they always, it, heart conditions and heart problems run within that breed. And it's a big thing, uh, you know, that happens to them. It's really sad that it's a, it's something that's happens to a large number of them. Uh, and basically, though uh, the doctor said this was three and a half years ago he was like I wouldn't recommend uh, getting any more of her heart medicine I mean any, I mean any more of her uh, tick tick medication or anything like that because I'm really uh, I, I don't think she's going to last and be able to live much longer. That's that's what the doctor said. And you know we ended up taking Lulu to a cardiologist uh, you know who is a heart doctor and he ended up um, saying, you know, there's this medication, uh, this heart medication that we can try and see how it goes. And she ended up, you know, uh, taking the medication and, and it prolonged her life for over, you know, three more years, which I'm so glad that we, you know, we were able to do that for Lulu. And I'm glad that we had three more years, over three more years with her. Uh, but any of those guys too who were saying stuff like, oh, well, Lulu shouldn't have been eating um, KFC and stuff like that. Basically, what the doctor said, uh, Lulu must take, um, you know, must eat with this, this medication. And pretty much Lulu uh, was very, never liked um, dog food. She would never eat dog food. She'd always turn up her nose at it. So she was really particular with what she'd eat. I remember when she was really young, she used to, my mom would cook up like ground beef you know and like drain it and everything and with rice and that was what she ate then all of a sudden she started not liking that and then started eating uh, you know chicken and basically though with KFC though she was not eating uh, KFC chicken as it is uh, that was not would not have been good for her basically my dad would take off all the skin you know and then he would uh, you know cut it into small pieces and then blot it so it's basically just a chicken breast and that's the one thing um, the doctor said chicken breast is totally fine and he said KFC is great if, if, if that's if that's what she'll eat you have to make sure she eats and that and then that's the thing she was really particular that was like pretty much the only thing she would eat is that and these things called cat tongue cookies, which she got loved. But I just want to, like I said, just want to let you guys know, and that was not the contributing factor to that. That was, you know, it was, she was not eating it as it was or anything like that. And that was not why it happened. It was a heart condition and all that kind of stuff. I just want to, like, like I said, just want to like let you guys know a little bit about that. And sorry for talking a long time, but I really did want to talk some about Lulu. And I know you guys have loved seeing her in the videos throughout the years and all that kind of stuff. So I want to cut to now, uh, before we get going, to uh, a clip from the first time you know I ever showed Lulu on video, you know, in, in, in on my channel. Hello, Lulu. Now, Mother, would you like to introduce everyone to our new dog, Lulu? This is our new friend, Lulu. And she's a Cavalier. And she's a Cavalier King, King Charles. Charles. We want to keep the memory of Max alive, so we got a, a family relative, distant it, relative. Yes, yeah, she's, Max would have been like the great grandfather or grandfather, yeah. something like that. We went all the way very far to get her. We just brought her home today. It's her first day in our house. 
And we named her Lulu because I used to love reading little Lulu comic books. And later, there'll be a tubby on the way. And then we'll have a tubby, so we'll have little Lulu and tubby pretty soon. Yes. Into Walmart we go. And it's a real like fingers crossed thing. Hopefully they have, you know, everything put out in here today. Because if you guys remember last Tuesday when I was in here, and I went to like four locations, uh, you know, there was something going on and a whole lot of the movies were not out yet. Like a lot of the um, stuff from Lion's Gate, like We Summon the Darkness wasn't out and a handful of other things. So hopefully uh, this week we'll see. Maybe some of that stuff that wasn't out, you know, last week is out as well, but we'll see. But like I said, fingers crossed, hopefully it's out. Yeah, good news. I went and peeked over in the actual section over there and I saw the new stuff out and some of the stuff from last week as well. So I'm glad it's all out. It's just weird. Like somebody like opened up. I think someone took Invisible Man because it's like opened like this weird. But like I was saying though, the big thing that came out today was the Impractical Jokers movie. And that one here um, on Blu-ray is on 1996 for that one. The DVD edition though is that is um, 1796 for the DVD of that. Also, this is one of the other ones. I forgot this came out today. The um, Shazam, the Lego DC Shazam one, which is called Magic and Monsters, which comes in here with this limited, um, you know, mini Shazam Lego figure in here. So that's cool. If any of you guys watch this one, let me know how this one was and if this one's worth checking out. But it's $17.96 for the Blu-ray, uh, $14.96 for the DVD of that one. It's like a pre-order thing of like Scoob that comes with a DVD of the Gourmet Ghost one. There was one that had some people from Food Network, like Bobby Lay, I mean, sorry, Bobby Flay and um, Gito D Yato Del Laurentiis was in it. That was okay. That was kind of a funny crossover one that they did. Um, other than that, though, right here in the front, I don't see anything else different. I don't think I showed this last Tuesday. I believe this was last Tuesday, the um, Band of Brothers. Was this a Blu-ray? No, a DVD edition of that, but it might have been a Blu-ray of that as well. Uh, also, though, um, today that came out this um, Sniper, Assassin's End. I'm going to have a review of this one at the end of this video. That's on um, $14.96 for the Blu-ray, uh, $12.96 for the DVD. There's also a Sniper collection here. This is kind of cool. It's the Ultimate Sniper collection, which is all eight of the movies together. has digital copies of them as well. So that's kind of cool. And it's a Walmart-only. So here's a look at the back of this one. It shows like the poster art for all the movies. This one is an only at Walmart exclusive one. Also though, uh, Soldier's Revenge, uh, this one that had uh, Val Kilmer in it, that one released today. Uh, that one's $14.96 for the Blu-ray, $12.96 for the DVD. But now though, we'll head over to the actual section over here. And like I was saying, I did see a bunch of new stuff. And one thing here I really wanted to tell you guys about, really excited about, uh, is uh, this one here called um, the, the Mermaid's Curse. Now this one uh, is one that I actually have a uh, part in because the, the, the characters are like researching about this mermaid and uh, on them, under they're watching a uh, YouTube video. So it was something that I shot for the movie, you know, talking about the, you know, the curse of this mermaid and all these weird sort of things that had happened in this town and all that kind of stuff. So I'm in here talking about that on this one. So really cool to see this one here in Walmart. And this one here is on $9.96 for that one. And if any of you guys get to check this out, uh, let me know what you guys think of this one. But like I said, really, really excited about this one here. Uh, some of the other ones that came out today was this one here called The Last Beyond. So I don't know anything about uh, this one. Also, there's an Ultraman collection here they have. It is from uh, Mill Creek. It says Ultraman X and then Ultraman Jinjin, Jinja. I mean, hopefully I'm saying that right here on um, Blu-ray. And then also today was this one. And I'll have a review of the uh, Blu-ray at the end of this video. Uh, is This is the film here, for, uh, which is a Shutter original movie called The Marshes. And that one here is uh, $9.96 for that one. Uh, this was also today, um, this one called Operation Sicar Sicario, I'm ho I know I'm saying that probably totally uh, wrong, but that one released today, and that one's $9.96 as well, as well as this movie here, uh, Kill Mode, that came out today, that's $9.96, uh, Ouija Shark, which is from uh, Wild Eye Releasing, uh, that one released today, and that's $9.96 as well. And this one, I'm going to have a review of this at the end of this video. This one here called the um, Jonestown Haunting. Uh, like I said, I'll be talking about this at the review portion. And now some of the ones that were not out last week, this is the one, the one that wasn't out on shelves last week. Uh, we Summon the Darkness with Alexander Daliadro and, uh, you know, Johnny Knoxville's in this movie. I love this movie. This is one, if you guys are curious about picking this one up, 100% definitely recommend you guys check this out. I, like I said, I absolutely love this movie. It's basically about these girls that meet these guys at this concert and bring them back to their house and things go drastically bad. 
Now over here too, and that's $14.96 for the Blu-ray, $12.96 for the DVD. And this is really weird too. I'm, I'm sure you guys are noticing this. There definitely was a printing error with this. This movie called A Perfect Plan with William Forsythe. But look at the bad definition on this slip cover. Underneath it's like the way it would look, like the color on it. You can see it better. Well, see, it's even kind of washed on this one a little bit, but it's really washed out on this cover, and all of them seem to be like this. It all seems to be like, unless it's supposed to look like this, but it, it doesn't seem right to me. It seems like really strange definition on it. Other than that, though, in here, uh, this came out today, and this is one I, 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 I don't know anything about, so I'm not going to um, just get this because I don't really know anything. I always like Michael Shannon, though, but it's called The Quarry. If you guys have watched this, though, let me know what you think of this one, if this one is worth picking up. Oh, I believe there's a Blu-ray as well. Also, Project Blue Book Season 2. That came out. That one's 1996. This is another one that wasn't out last Tuesday called Outback. And this is, I ended up having to order this online. I haven't, I've not gotten to check this one out yet, but it looked interesting to me. And it's only, it's uh, $14.96 for that one. Other than that, though, over here, just see if there's anything else different. I don't want to miss over showing anything. Let me check within this area. Because like I said, sometimes they mix things all in. Oh, yeah, there's one other thing I see. This is one I did not know anything about, too, and I was thinking about getting this uh, Two Minutes to Fame, because I like Jay, always like Jay Farrell, who was on SNL, and he was also in the movie Unsane, and Cat, uh, Cat Williams. But if you guys have watched this one, let me know if I should pick this one up or not, if this is a funny one. Like I said, I'm a fan of both of them. It is $14.96, so I might wait. But like I said, if you've seen it, let me know how that one is and if that's worth picking up. Other than that, though, uh, here's one of the other ones that wasn't out last um, week. This one here called Like a Dog, the one with... Um, Josh Donnell and um, Megan Fox here. That wasn't, I didn't see that last Tuesday. That was one of the ones that wasn't put out in any of the stores, but that's $14.96 for the Blu-ray, $12.96 for the uh, DVD of that one. Let's just check. This area is all totally empty. I guess they must be changing this out over here. Uh, but other than that though, don't see anything else <laughs> different here though. Yeah, and when you hear a cough, you walk the other way, but other than that, like I said, don't see anything else different, but really glad all this stuff, though, was out on the shelf today, though, so I'm glad about that. Into Target we go. Yeah, and in here, though, I'm not really expecting there really to be anything out in here, because like, a lot of times they don't change out the stuff, but still, haven't been in here in a while, so I figured just quickly check the section just to see if there's anything on you know, the front, if they put, like, if they're going to have, like, Impractical Jokers, the movie in here, because I didn't see... Uh, pretty in pink in uh, Walmart. I might have missed over, or maybe they didn't put it out. But I, I, I feel like Walmart would have would have had that one. But I don't know for sure. If you did see it in your Walmart, though, let me know in the comments below, and maybe they will have it in here as well. Yeah, but looking over here though at the new release thing here, it seems to be all past releases of stuff like more past couple weeks, like Onward here, and they still have some of the Onward uh, Target exclusive ones of that one. I am really wondering though if down the line if they end up having uh, slip covers for this one or not, because it's like one of the only you know Disney ones not to have slip covers. So I'm wondering if like for like Black Friday time if they have them with slip covers then. I doubt it, but I really am wondering about that. But I really did like that movie a lot. Other than that, though, it's all the same stuff in the past couple weeks. I'll quickly check in the actual section to see if they change anything out. Someone was telling me, too, that this Stranger Things in the VHS box at the um, Blu-ray one was like a dollar, but it seems to be five dollars. So I, have, I don't know if that's right or not, but someone said that to me in the comments or a message or something like that, about that only being a dollar. Other than that, though, like I said, it's all just past, at least in the past couple weeks here. Nothing new here but we'll head over the actual section and, and check real fast though, to see if there's anything else over there though yeah well i went over to the actual section it was all the same old stuff nothing new whatsoever not even like new stuff from the past like week or so that i that i was noticing in there so it's like i get i don't know if they either didn't get any of the stuff from last tuesday or anything but like i said i didn't see anything new i did see though in the actual section though when it comes to stranger things the blu-ray i show in the front uh, it's actually uh, not a dollar. It's a dollar. I think it was 48. Was it like a dollar 48? Which is amazing price for season one of that on Blu-ray. Because I, I think when I first came out, I remember buying that for like $25 or $30 or something like that. Because I remember buying it like brand new, and I remember thinking to at the time that it was going to be like rare and like hard to get. 
it wasn't. You know, as you see, it's still out and it's only that, that cheap, but I do wonder if we're gonna get like a season three Blu-ray of that like that, since these, you know, season one has still been in there after all this time. But now, going to head to Best Buy. Because if you guys didn't see, I went to Best Buy yesterday in my video, because it was, yesterday was the first day that it opened, you were allowed to go inside. But now I'm gonna go now and see if maybe they got anything you know, in today's new releases out, because yesterday, if you guys didn't see the video, there was nothing new in there at all. It was like totally, uh, you know, most of the section was empty. So fingers crossed, we'll see if they have anything new and if the new release section, everything's been updated, but we shall see though. Into Best Buy we go. And like I was saying, you know, hopefully they have out some of the new releases or some of the new stuff because like I was in here yesterday. If you guys didn't see the video, uh, check out that video. And I just, I kind of wanted just to see what it was like going back in for the first day when you were allowed to go in without making a reservation because a handful of, reser you know, locations had a thing where you could reserve a time and go in and that kind of stuff. But now today's the first, you know, yesterday was the first day you could go in without any reservations and that kind of stuff. But we'll see if they have out the new stuff though, hopefully. Yeah, looking though in the new release section, it's all the same stuff again. Nothing new is changed out here. It's exactly like it was yesterday. I do wonder, no, wait a minute. I do see a couple, no, I I'm wrong. There are some new things here, not a lot. But um, the, I didn't see this last time because this is this came out like a week or so back. But they do have in here the um, brand new steelbooks here that came out. The um, Gladiator steelbook, the 4K steelbook, and that one is uh, $24.99 for that one. As well as the uh, Braveheart steelbook here, which is $24.99 as well. I'm going to show you guys a closer look, though, at the Gladiator one as well as the Friday the 13th one. This one's a really cool uh, steelbook here. And this one here is uh, $14.99 for that one. So that's a good price for this. For sure, but like I said, I'm gonna have a um, a closer look at this one at the end of this video. But really, really cool steelbook. So glad that they have, you know, something new out in here though, and change it out. And I don't believe I saw this either, the hunt. And there are some empty spots here, like one cut of the dead, uh, birds of prey. Uh, let's see, some I can't tell all the ones here, but at least though, it's a good sign that they're having some of the new stuff in. But we're checking the actual section though to see if there's anything else different over there though. Well, it is really picked over still, but they do have some of the new stuff. I don't see Pretty in Pink over here, uh, but they do have the Impractical Jokers uh, movie here. And that one is, uh, you know, uh, $19.99 uh, for that one here on Blu-ray. And they also have uh, A Soldier's Revenge. That was one of the other uh, new ones that came out today. And that one's uh, $16.99. And I don't think I saw the Harley Quinn one out on shelves when I was in here yesterday. I don't believe so. And that one here is... Um, you know, and that might be, is that in the right spot here? Yeah, $17.99 for the DVD of that one. I'm gonna talk about this at the end of this video as well. I actually really like that show a lot, but other than that though, I don't see anything else here different, but definitely is a good sign though that they do have some of the new stuff out. Even though it's not a lot of stuff, they still do have some of the things in here though. Uh, and all these two I'm expecting, they're kind of update this and get new stuff in these like sale sections and stuff soon as well. Yeah, but I'm definitely thinking that like in the coming weeks, we're going to see them start to get in more and more stuff. You know, there's not lots of a lot of huge big releases, you know, coming up. But I, it's, I'm glad to see that they're still starting to get some things. But if any of you guys did go to your Best Buy location uh, today, let me know if it was like, the, you know, if they ha started having some of the new stuff out. Also, let me know, too, if they ended up having um, Pretty in Pink in there, because I feel like they would have that, especially I feel like they would have had that in Walmart. But like I said, I didn't see it at mine. But let me know, though, if you did uh, see that one. Anyway, though, guys, too, uh, let me know in the comments below, though. Like I always say, I always say if you guys enjoy these videos, uh, definitely give this video a thumbs up. Also, let me know in the comments below anything, you know, DVD, Blu-ray, or 4K that you picked up today, if you guys ended up picking up anything. As well, let me know anything new that you guys have been watching on TV or on streaming or any new movies that you checked out on demand or any of that kind of stuff as well. But anyway, though, guys, thanks so much for watching and subscribing, and thanks again for all the support. Now stay tuned for the brand new reviews. And the first one I got here is from Universal, and it's the film here called The Hunt. And this movie, though, I saw this one in theaters. This was actually one of the last movies that I saw in theaters before they had closed. And this one, though, is it's basically, though, it kind of has vibes um, of, like, Battle Royale mixed with, like, the most dangerous game, surviving the game, you know, the movie with, um, you know, Ice-T. It has, like, vibes of all that kind of. And it's basically, though, about a group of people who wake up out in the middle of the woods. And it's kind of like, um, they're like, where are we? They can, you know, they're all, like, loopy when they wake up. They don't exactly 
exactly know where they are, how they ended up getting out there. And they basically find out right when they get there, they see like these weapons and stuff like that. And they find out that they're being, you know, hunted, that somebody is hunting them. And you find out like early on exactly who these people are, like in the very beginning of the movie. But I don't want to spoil too much about this movie, though. But essentially, though, it's about the people who are being hunted, trying to survive. And it, it's one of those movies, too, that has like a whole lot of character actors that pop up in here. Like um, Ethan Suple is in the film. You know, Ethan Suple, I've followed him forever. You know, he was in stuff like, um, started out in like movies, you know, shows like Boy Meets World. Of course, was in Mall Rats as the guy who couldn't see the sailboat. Uh, you know, was in My Name is Earl. So I've been a fan of him forever. Uh, American History X. So lots and lots of movies that he was in. Uh, and, and he was in the movie. Uh, a handful of other people. Harry Swank isn't one of the main characters in the movie. Uh, Emma Roberts has a small part in the movie. But a whole bunch of different people that I, you know, recognize from different, like, TVs and films and movies, TV and films and stuff like that. Uh, but basically, though, it's just about them. You know, Ike Bernhardt, he's in the movie as well. Always a fan of him, too. I really like the movie, though, that he directed called The Oath. Uh, and he was also in, like, Snatched and stuff like that. Uh, and like I said, too, like, people that do more comedy doing um, more, like, dramatic kind of roles in this movie. But essentially, though, they're out there in the woods and they're being hunted and they have to figure out exactly how they're going to survive, where they're going to go, all that kind of stuff. But a really, really interesting movie. And like I said, it has vibes of surviving the game, Battle Royale, that kind of stuff. On here, though, it has a bunch of different featurettes on here, like Death Scene Breakdown, a cre uh, Crafting the Hunt. But like I said, I would definitely recommend you guys check this one out. If you guys have seen it, too, uh, let me know what you guys thought of this one here. And this also has the Blu-ray, the DVD, and a digital copy of the film in this. Uh, the next one's here from Paramount. And these first two are some really cool brand new Steelbook releases. And this is the uh, Steelbook release of Friday the 13th here. And this is a really cool, on the back it says, Killer Molly, Killer. And like, um, this is a great Steelbook. I'll show you guys, though, a look inside. It has a digital copy of the film as well. But here's a look, though, inside. This is one of those movies, though, if you guys have never seen it. Uh, and, I, and I feel like most people have seen this movie, but I still don't want to spoil anything about this because it's not, uh, if you haven't seen it, there's like a big twist to this movie and, and all that kind of stuff about who's the killer and all that kind of stuff. But it's basically, though, about a group of people who are going and setting up a camp. Uh, you know, the uh, camp where bad things had happened in the past there, and they've decided to reopen the camp. And it's kind of like, um, like, like kind of like the counselors are all there preparing for the opening, which will be in a couple days. And they're kind of there doing their training, getting things all set up, and all those th sort of things. And it kind of focuses on the counselors and everything that are there. And one by one, somebody is going there and killing them off one by one. But it's a really, really great movie. And I watched this one again. I had not seen this movie in a long, you know, the original film in a really, really long time. So I was definitely glad to watch this one again. Like I said, a really cool uh, new steelbook release here. This one here is a steelbook release as well, but this is a 4K steelbook of, uh, you know, uh, the film directed by Ridley Scott starring Russell Crowe and Gladiator. This is another movie which I had not seen in a really, really long time. This is a great film here. Uh, and this one has, you know, the, um, the 4K version. Now, the 4K on here, it has the theatrical version as well as the extended version. So it has both versions of the film on the 4K. Then it also has on the, um, you know, the Blu-ray, it has the theatrical and extended version as well, as well as a, a disc of all special features on this one. Here's a look, though, at the back for this one. 4K-wise, though, this one looks great on 4K. Uh, like a really, really great film. Uh, Joaquin Phoenix is also in the movie. On here, though, some of the features that are on here, on the 4K disc, it has an introduction by Ridley Scott on the extended cut. It has a Conte track on here with Ridley Scott and Russell Crowe, which is on the extended cut as well. Commentary with R Ridley Scott as well as the editor and cinematographer. That's on the theatrical version of the film. On the um, Blu-ray version, it has the um, extended, ver you know, uh, introduction as well, a commentary track, uh, some make, some you know, making of featurettes, uh, abandoned sequences and deleted scenes. So lots and lots of features on this one, but a really, really great Steelbook release as well. But really cool these Steelbook releases that you know uh, Paramount has been releasing lately. Now this is one I was really excited to see. This is from the Paramount's uh, brand new line called the Paramount uh, Paramount Presents line. And this is the film Pretty in Pink, available for the first time ever on Blu-ray. This one has never had uh, a Blu-ray release. I don't know if it ever has in, in, in any other countries, but at least in the U.S. I know it's never had a Blu-ray release, and it's uh, numbered on the side, uh, number six. So this is the sixth film, you know, that's been released in this uh, new line from Paramount. And this is a movie which I had always heard about, you know, and John Hughes was the writer of this film. He didn't direct this movie, uh, but he was the writer of the film, and I had never seen this movie till now. I have no idea how I've never seen this movie, and I feel like it might have been because I was kind of waiting for this one to come to Blu-ray, and I didn't want to buy the DVD because I always felt like, oh yeah, at some point I feel like there's going to be a Blu-ray of this movie. And I don't know how I never watched this movie. I had heard about this movie. I knew about what it was about. I knew about the characters, especially John Cryer's character as Ducky. I knew about that. But I, like, I never had seen
seen this. So I'm so glad I finally got to, to watch this one. Here's a look though inside. I love the way these are laid out because it opens up like this and it has like the original uh, poster artwork for the movie in here. And then here's a look though at the back and, and then it's in a cool uh, clear case here. And in here too, here's a look though inside. It has like a, um, a quote on here from the director about the movie. But essentially though, if you guys have not seen this movie, it's basically though about Molly Ringwald's character. And it's kind of about she likes this one... Um, you know, guy who is played by, you know, um, Andrew McCarthy, who, you know, who also went on to be in uh, the Weekend at Bernie's movies. That's what I always think of him from. And, you know, he's kind of like this rich guy. And, you know, um, uh, you know uh, Molly Ringwald's character, you know, she's in high school and she wants to go to the prom with him. But, you know, she doesn't come from a lot of money. So she's kind of like, like doesn't really want to go out with him at the same time. She doesn't want to, because she's like thinking, is she going to be like a traitor to her, to her family and everything? And to, uh, you know, and to people that don't have a lot of money as well like her friends and stuff if she goes out and dates this really really rich guy who really and she feels like like kind of like well should I be dating him because I, I'm not on his level I don't have the kind of money that he does or anything like that and then uh, you know John Cryer's character is her best friend Ducky and he's like really in love with Molly Ringwald's character and he's always kind of like tr trying to tell her that he likes her and he doesn't know how to do it. and it's all these awkward kind of stuff and Molly Ringwald she her character works at this record store that's run by Annie Potts you know who was you know Janine in the Ghostbusters films and lots and lots of things uh, but it's just a really really fun movie like I said I don't know how I never watched this till now I absolutely absolutely love this movie. It has on here though a brand new feature on here with um you know talking to the director about the film. It has an isolated score. It has on here the original special feature the Lost Dance talking about the original ending of the film as well as a theatrical trailer on this one here as well. The next one here is from Warner Brothers. They sent out a free copy of this one. Late guys know this one is available. And this is the um the uh, Harley Quinn uh, animated series here. This is the complete first season of the show and I've heard so many people and also this one too Warner Brothers sent me over a free copy of this one. Late guys know this one was available. But this this is one that I had heard so many people telling me how great this show was. So I was really glad to get to watch this show. And it's definitely, keep in mind, this is a TV MA show for mature audiences. So it's not for mature audiences. So this is not like a kid's uh, show whatsoever. But I really like this. This is like crazy. It's, it's very much in the same style as the Harley Quinn, you know, Birds of Prey movie. It has a similar kind of uh, vibe. And Harley Quinn's voice by uh, Kelly Coco, you know, in the show. I really like this. It's basically, though, about Harley Quinn and like, you know, what what she's doing and like the group of people that she's with like you know and, and her relationship with the Joker and the ups and downs of the relationship with the Joker and all the different villain characters that she comes in contact with and always like scheming up something kind of bad you know going on but like I said it's a really really like intense super R-rated show like I was not expecting I heard people tell me about that but I didn't know that it was going to be like as crazy as it was and like I said it's definitely on the line of like the same sort of vibe that Birds of Prey had and I really like this one I really like that DC does a lot of these shows that are like much more like you know like Swamp Thing was one that was more R-rated and I, I like that they do that with some of their their uh, material but I really like this one a lot this one I would definitely recommend you guys check this one out if you guys have not seen this let me you know if you guys have seen this let me know what you guys thought of this show this here is a two uh, disc set here as well and the next one I got here is from Warner Brothers as well they sent our free copy of this one as well to let you guys know that this one is available and this is uh, Impractical Jokers the movie and you know um, this is a really really fun film I actually got to see this one in theaters. Uh, you know the show though I actually I didn't haven't seen a lot of the newer seasons of the show but back when the show first started I watched this one all the time I always love like hidden camera shows and like hidden camera prank shows and all this kind of stuff and it's basically though about four guys who have been friends you know since high school and you know uh, in, in the show is basically them going and doing crazy pranks on the street and then you know who at, by the end of the show who loses the most pranks they have to do this crazy challenge at the end but in the movie version it's basically though about them uh, back in in 1994 and they're going to this Paul Abdul concert uh, you know right after they, I think it was like they graduated from high school uh, around graduating when they were graduating from high school and they ended up going to this Paul Abdul concert and uh, they end up like sneaking on stage and acting like security guards and it becomes this whole big to do and they end up getting kicked out and it's this whole big thing that happens and you know years later though they end up you know seeing Paul Abdul you know at a restaurant she comes over to them and they're like uh oh she remembers us from you know this embarrassing thing that happened years before and she you knows she comes up and says oh hey guys I'm a huge fan of Impractical Jokers I love this show and I have this concert that's going on in Miami I'd love for you guys to come and be special guests there and come and see the show and they're like oh okay and they're kind of feeling like oh it's our time to redeem ourselves because of what happened years back at the concert because uh, they got kicked out and everything so it's basically a road trip movie 
So it has like sequences where it's stuff shot like a film, you know, and then it has the, the um, you know, hidden camera segment. So it's basically like them going on a road trip. So along the way to get to Miami, to get to the concert, they're going from like New York to Miami. And it's kind of about all the places that they stop at. And as they stop at locations, then it ends up being like crazy um, prank challenges that they end up doing, you know, along the way. Like one of them, they go into this like hidden cave, like into a like underground cave. And they do like a prank. Like the one guy is like a guy who's been stuck in the cave for like 20 years or something like that and wanders out of it. And there's, a, there's some really, really funny stuff in this movie. This thing, I, I, like I said, um, I really, really like this one a lot. If you guys are a fan of the series, would definitely recommend you guys check this out. And even if you have never seen the show before, this is one of those things where it doesn't matter if you've never seen it. You can totally understand what's going on here. And like I said, it's, it's it has like movie aspects to it. Uh, so it's probably like 50-50. 50% of the movie is done as a film and then the other part are like hidden camera segments. But it's fil the, all the hidden camera segments though are filmed more a little more movie like though than the show was but like I said definitely recommend you guys check this one out really really fun uh, film here and the next one here is uh, from Sony, and this is um, the film here uh, called Sniper Assassin's End, and this one um, you know stars Tom Bern Berninger, Berninger, and this is um, basically though about this guy you know played by Chad Michael Collins, and there was like a, um, a like a someone who was like running for like a, it was like what was it a dignitary like who was like like talking about like this speech, and he ends up getting killed, and like and he gets killed by a sniper, and he basically is like you know talking about this big speech like this trade agreement speech, and he ends of getting killed and basically though like the government was it the government of CIA was like investigating uh, CIA was investigating you know who did it and they believe that because of the way it was done that the only person that could have done it was Chad Michael Khan's character who was a sniper and they said the way it was done and it's and they believe that he had something to do with it and his father was a sniper as well and they believe that he might have something to do with it so basically though the CIA comes after him and and takes him in but at the same time the people who were behind this actually like are trying to uh, come after you know Chad Michael Kahn's character and it's basically though about them coming after him and he has to try and clear his name but at the same time though the government thinks like because like they were coming after him they thought oh it must be like the person you know Chad Michael Kahn's characters people have that he's working with there's more people that he's involved with so like oh they, they don't realize that it was actually these bad guys that are trying to frame him or whatever's going on and they think that he has people that he's working with so it becomes like a whole big crazy to do here and like I said this one here is called you know Sniper Assassin's End. Now this one here, I did a full unboxing of this set, and this is from Sony as well. Uh, if you guys want to see the full unboxing of this set, uh, check out the link below, and I'll put a link in the description here where I put this one, and I have a full unboxing of this set. But this is a really cool collection here. It's a 4K collection called the Columbia Classics 4K Ultra HD Collection Volume 1. This one here has six movies in it for the first time ever on 4K. And this has Mr. Smith Goes to Washington, uh, Lawrence of Arabia, Dr. Strangelove, uh, Gandhi, A League of Their Own, and Jerry Maguire. Here's a quick look though inside here. And it has a booklet in here. And like I said, I have a full unboxing of this set that you guys can check out at the link below. But a really, really cool collection. But like I said, just want to let you guys know in case you guys didn't see that video. I'll I have a full unboxing and look at this set. And I'll have a link below for that one. And the next ones I got here are all from MovieZing.com, and I'll have a link below where you guys can order these ones for the best price. And this one is also from RLJ and, uh, and Entertainment, and this is also a film that you know is a Shutter original. It's a movie called The Marshes, and this was an interesting movie. It kind of has a vibe a little bit to like Wolf Creek. It has that sort of feel. And it's an Australian horror film. It's basically though about these um, you know uh, micro microbiologists who are doing like um, research on the water out in this kind of area in like the marshes out in the middle of nowhere in Australia, and they're kind of out they're studying certain things in the water and as soon as they get out there too they kind of think they're going to be out there for a little bit and it's like the woman along with her boyfriend and you know and this other guy who are who are all working on this and she's saying to her boyfriend well are we going to be leaving tomorrow and it's because right when they get out there too it's kind of weird they are these weird hunters out there that are kind of giving them loads of problems and stuff like that and and like the boyfriend seems like he's kind of like looking for something specific it's kind of weird she's like are we going to leave tomorrow he's like oh well i have these things i gotta look for and oh, i've got to find this but at the same time Time that she that she keeps on having these like horrific dreams at night when she's there, and like you know, acting like sort of seeing things in the dream and seeing seeing like almost premonitions of what could be going on out there. Essentially, though, the movie is about somebody out there, you know, in the marshes, and that is like a you know a Wolf Creek kind of guy, or like a you know without being like a creature, you know, maybe he is a creature. You have to see the movie, but it's basically like a Jeepers Creepers kind of guy as well, like this weird guy out there. It's not a good thing for these people that are these 
researchers and it's basically them out there dealing with this person that's out there and exactly what they're going to do and like I said if you guys are fans of movies like you know uh, Wolf Creek I would definitely recommend you guys check that out this one out it has a similar kind of vibe uh, to that one the next one here this is from um a company called um, 109, no, 1091, and this is a, a documentary which I, I really like. This one, and it's um, uh, a documentary here called Finders Keepers, and this was really, really interesting. And this is a you know about this guy who ended up buying a storage locker, and in the storage locker there was this grill, and in the grill was a severed human foot a human like part of a, like because uh, it was basically though a guy who was in an accident a plane crash he ended up losing his leg and he said that he wanted to keep his leg and, and like just to keep it kind of uh, you know honor his father who died in the plane crash because it was basically him and his father and another person and his father had passed away but he survived but lost his leg in the crash and he wanted to kind of have like a, a memoriam to his father and keep his leg and everything and essentially though he didn't pay for his storage locker and forgot that his leg was in there and this guy bought the storage locker and he wanted the leg and he wanted to have the leg be like a tourist attraction and he wanted to sell admission to see it but it ended up being like confiscated and it became this whole big thing between these guys back and forth about this leg and like because it was like a mummified preserved leg it was this is a really strange concept it, it, but it is a amazing documentary and they end up going on like judge mathis to try and argue who keeps the leg and it, it, it is really crazy and yes you do see what the leg looks like it was like woof but this was a great documentary like this was i was totally off guard with this i did not know much about this at all going into this movie uh but it, it, it's just like one weird thing after another between these two with every kind of problem in the book but if you guys have seen this documentary, let me know what you guys thought. But I really like this one a lot. Uh, the next one here, this is from MovieZing.com as well. And this is also from um, Lee Mark uh, Studios. Let me just cover this up so no one says anything. But it's a movie here called Trespass Into Terror. And this is basically, though, about a group of people who are going... Um, what were they doing? They are going like on a, a hunting trip out in the middle of the woods and they end up, you know, there's like an area where it's like, you know, restricted, don't go into this area and basically though, it's kind of like this crazy people that live out in the in the area out there, uh, you know, in the restricted area and of course they accidentally end up going into that restricted area because it's kind of like there's signs up but they don't exactly know where they're going and all that kind of stuff and of course they go in the wrong area and those people are coming after them and they're making their life like a nightmare coming after them and they're trying to figure out exactly how they're going to get away and they're being chased by these people. It is an intense, crazy movie about like going into the wrong area. And of course, you know, if you go into the wrong restricted area, you know, it could be a very bad thing. And that was basically what was happening to people in the movie. The next one here, this is from Lee Mark uh, as well. And this is also from Movie Zing. And this one is, this is actually from 2008 is when this movie was from. And this is a movie called Hot Rod Horror. And this is basically though about like, um, it has a lot, a lot of like you know classic cars and stuff in the movie, uh, but it's basically though about uh, like this gigantic junkyard. It's a really cool junkyard location that they shot this in this huge junkyard, and basically a group of these friends end up like wandering into this junkyard to check it out. I think they were like looking for somebody, and they go out there, and it's kind of like a um, hills have eyes kind of situation because they go out in this junkyard, and there's somebody crazy out there who's going after them, hunting them down, coming after them, and it's like I said, it, it you know it has. As a throwback kind of like 80s kind of there was one movie called like, i think called like blood savage i think it was or uh, blood salvage i think it was called this movie kind of reminded me a little bit of that one a little bit it definitely has like a real throwback 80s style vibe like i said it is from 90 uh from 2008 so it's older but still it has a, a throwback to like an 80s kind of vibe just about like a group of people out there that are being hunted down by somebody in the uh junkyard and this is one I was really interested in seeing. I heard a lot of really great things. This is from a Criterion Collection. This is Portrait of a Lady on Fire. This is a French film here. Like I said, this is one that I have heard a lot of people talking about what a great movie this was. And this is, you know, this is set in the, um, what was this set in the 18th century? And it's basically, though, about a woman who's hired to be a, a, you know, paint a portrait of this woman, but she can't tell her that she's doing it because the woman doesn't want to sit for portraits and she doesn't want to be painted. And she's getting ready to get married. And it's kind of like the, the woman that she's painting is getting ready to get married and she doesn't really want to get married to this guy it's kind of like an arranged marriage so it's this real awkward thing but it's basically though about her kind of like you know 
you know, kind of following her around to, to figure out how she's going to paint her, but without her really knowing that she's painting her. But it ends up becoming like a relationship between these two. And it's kind of like, you know, that they don't want anyone to know about this whole thing. But it is a really amazing, you know, well-written character piece. It's like amazing cinematography in this movie. This is so well done. Like I said, I had heard so many great things about this movie, and this is definitely one I would definitely recommend you guys check out. This has on here, though, a brand new uh, 4K digital master. as a conversation with the director on here, as well as film critic uh, Dana Stevens. Uh, some brand new interviews on here with the actors. Uh, interview on here with the cinematographer. Interview from 2019 with art um, artist Helen Derma on creating paintings for the film. Also in here, though, there's a booklet. Here's a look, though, inside of the disc, but there's a booklet in here with some stuff about the production, some, you know, um, some stills, stuff about the cast and all that kind of stuff. Here's a look at one of the paintings in the film, but really, really great paintings in here as well. But like I said, this is definitely one I would recommend you guys check out. Like I said, I heard so many great things uh, about this one. Uh, and the next one here, this is one I'm really excited about, uh, and this is from ITN uh, Distribution. It's a movie here called The Mermaid's Curse. This is from uh, producer Scott Jeffrey and directed by Louisa Warren. And this one here, which is really fun, like I said, this is called The Mermaid's Curse. But what's really cool about this movie is I have a part in this movie. And it's basically, though, about like a, um, you know, the idea of like a siren, like a mermaid that lives out in the lake and someone that falls in love with a mermaid that comes on the land and it's like not a good thing. And, the, and if that's essentially what it is, uh, that's kind of the concept but in here though the characters are looking up you know about like the legends of mermaids and like the legends of mermaids that are maybe not good and basically though when they're looking up videos online they end up watching a video of mine so I filmed a thing for the movie talking about like the curse of the mermaid and kind of about like uh, about these people that had gone missing and that kind of stuff so there's a couple minute scene in here of them watching my video you know talking about uh, the mermaids and all that kind of stuff so that was really cool I filmed a lot of stuff for Scott Jeffrey's uh, productions I always love being involved in his stuff so it's always really fun uh, and this is a great one here like I said this is called The Mermaid's Curse and I love the uh, cover on this one here as well uh, the next one here this is from um from uh, Four Digital Media. And this is a movie called The Jonestown Haunting. And this is basically though about, you know, the you know, Jim Jones and you know the People's Temple. And Jim Jones was the cult leader. And it's basically though about all the people that, you know, had died at, at his hands by, you know, drinking the Kool-Aid and that was poisoned and that kind of stuff. And it's about somebody that's, you know, survived from this and, you know, got away. And she was always haunted by uh, what had happened to her. And she kind of needs to go and go back. She wants to go back and see what it's like. This is after 10 years after this had happened to her because it's been haunting her for years and years. So she decides to, you know, go back there. And, you know, of course, when she goes back there, though, she starts seeing weird things so she's going to like the ruins of where all this was and she starts seeing weird things and having weird memories about what had happened to her and all the kind of stuff that was going on but this is actually a pretty interesting movie like I said if you guys like movies that deal with like cults and you know because uh, you know there was another movie too called about Jim Jones it was not exactly about him for sure per se but it was a movie called The Sacrament it's another really great movie but like I said it's basically though about a survivor though going back who has been haunted by it and she's now dealing with you know actually going back and now getting there and experiencing really weird things so that's essentially what this one is about and like I said this one here is called uh, The Jonestown Haunting and the next ones here are all from ViaVision and these are all Australian releases now these ones are all region free so you guys can watch these ones no problem in any US Blu-ray player you don't have to have any special player or any player that plays all all region codes or anything like that these will play perfectly fine in all US uh, uh, you know blu-ray players that are region a so you have no no nothing to worry about because people always say when I talk about if something's region free and all that region free means that they're playing any player no problem at least they're playing no problem in US players and Australian players and these are from um, via visions brand new line called imprint and these are the first five releases from the imprint line which are classic movies that are getting released on blu-ray and they have a bunch more coming out as well but it's a really really cool line and they all have these cool uh, slip cover cases there and I'm going to show you guys a closer look at all these ones and they're also all numbered on the side so it's one two you know so sorry, sorry one two three four five like I said they're all numbered I really love you know when they're all numbered like this and in here though the first movie uh, and then which is the number one here is uh, you know the HG Wells of uh, you know classic uh, the war of the world so it's a great film here now this one here is mastered from a, a new 4k restoration from the original camera negative it has 
has an exclusive commentary by film critics uh, Barry Fosworth and Fosworth Farshaw 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 and Kim Newman. I know I'm probably saying the name totally wrong. A commentary on here with uh, actor Jean Barry and actress uh, Anne uh, Robinson. Auto commentary by audio commentary by fans Joe Dante, Bob Burns, and Will Warren. You know Joe Dante was the director of uh, films like Gremlins, uh, The Sky Is Falling, The War of the Worlds documentary, H. G. Wells, The Father of Science Fiction featurette, uh, The Mercy. Um, you know, the Mercury Theater uh, on Air presents the War of the Worlds radio broadcast from 1938 with stills from or Orson Welles, the actual trailer, photo gallery. Here's a look, though, inside. All of them, too, underneath have alternate artwork underneath of the slipcover here. Here's a look, though, inside at this one. Uh, the next one here, which is the number two uh, release, is uh, Sorry, Wrong Number. And this one has on here a 1080p presentation of the film, exclusive commentary by uh, Noir Export and Film Noir Foundation board member Alan K. Rode, uh, introduction by film historian Eddie Muller, uh, Hold the Phone, Making of Sorry, Wrong Number, Sorry, Wrong Number, Lux uh, Radio Theater, with bar um, uh, you know uh, broadcast from uh, 1950, uh, Sorry, Wrong Number radio play on here, a theatrical trailer, photo gallery. Here's a look, though, inside at the artwork inside here for this one, and a look inside at the disc. Like I said, these are really, really cool releases here. Uh, and then number three release here is uh, I Married a Monster here. And this one has a 1080p presentation of the film, exclusive commentary by film critics Barry Farsworth uh, and Kim Newman, theatrical trailer, photo gallery. Here's a look, though, at the back. And I really love the cover on this one. It's a great image on this one here. Uh, and I'll show you guys a look inside here at this one. Uh, and then uh, the, the fourth release here is uh, The Duelist. And this one here, you know, stars uh, Keith Carradine, Harvey Keitel, and it's a film directed by Ridley Scott. This has a uh, 1080p presentation of the film, commentary track with Ridley Scott, commentary and isolated score by composer Howard, Bur Howard Blake, uh, interview with actor Keith Carradine, dueling directors Ridley Scott and, and um, Kevin Reynolds interview. It has on here a theatrical trailer, photo, gallery, photo and poster gallery on this one. Here's a look though inside at the artwork here. Look at the back here for that one. And here's a look inside. And the last one, which is the fifth release here, is uh, Waterloo. Uh, you know, it's about Napoleon um, Barnevart. And this stars Rob uh, Steiger and Christopher Plummer. And this one has on here the 10 EP presentation, uh, Sheldon uh, Hall at Waterloo featurette, as well as a uh, theatrical trailer on this one. Here's a look, though, at the back. And then here's a look at the disc here for that one as well. Like I said, these are some really, really cool releases here. And these are all from Via Vision's uh, brand new line, like I was saying, called Imprint Films. And these ones are here are from Via Vision. These are some TV releases. This is the movie that's uh, the show that stars Jennifer Carpenter and Morris Chestnut, which I didn't see the show at all when this was on, but I saw lots of ads for this. And this is the complete series of the show, uh, The Enemy Within. This is basically, though, about Jennifer Carpenter's character who, you know, ended up giving, um, she worked for like, was it, she worked for the CIA and she ended up giving like information because her son was being held hostage and they wanted to know like the names of these agents and that they needed, you know, the, the hostage person wanted to get these names and she was told not to say anything but she wanted to save her son so she gave these names up and because of that they ended up getting killed so she ended up getting arrested and considered a traitor in prison for what she did even though she did what she had to do to save her son but she was kind of blamed for this but then there ends up being these attacks that are happening and they end up needing her help because she has all these skills with like finding out certain like information stuff like that so Morris Chestnut's character has to like reluctantly like get her out of prison to work with her and that's pretty much what it is is her you know and a lot of people are really against Against her because of her giving in information and she has to try and sort of try and redeem herself and explain why and everything throughout the show and this one here is region free as well so you guys can watch this one no problem in any u.s um you know uh dvd player and this next the last one here is from via vision as well and this is um on becoming a god in central florida and this stars kristen dunce and this is a really interesting show i believe this is originally aired on uh, showtime uh and this one here you know is basically though it's kind of it's set in 1992 and it's about kind of like the those pyramid schemes where they kind of like talk people into giving all their money to these like groups and they say oh it's like a self-help and if you give money to this group you're going to get all this money and things are going to be great for you and Kirsten Dunn's character she was like giving money to this group and it was kind of like not really going so well for her and her family and they gave all this money to this group and she acts like this is like this group is going to really help her in her life and all this 
certain things and because she's got a lot of different kind of problems in her in her life that she's going through and she like, it's basically about her trying to kind of take over this group and kind of like put force yourself into the group and it's a really interesting sh uh, show and like the head of this the, of this group uh that is running this is run by ted levine you know who was in you know of course like stuff like um you know um uh, Signs of the Lambs, you know, and uh, stuff like uh, The Mangler. I've always been a fan of Ted Levine. He's great in the show. But it's basically, though, all about, like, this conning this business, you know, this group and conning people out of their money and Chris Kirsten Dunn's character getting involved in this group and everything. But it's a really interesting show. Like I said, this is a three-disc set here, which has the all the complete first season here on uh, DVD. And this one is region-free as well, so you guys can watch this one no problem in any U.S. Um, DVD player. But anyway, though, guys, that's all for the review portion of this video. Thanks again for watching subscribing, and I'll see See you guys later. Bye.